September. We're coming into an Olympic year. They need bodily, in their mind, a break from running a little bit. Many take September off, but right now, this, this certainly makes them focus on it. Let's go back and hear what Terry Brom had to say about the race. There's going to be a definite movement with the last mile. Um, hopefully, you know, it's the person who makes the last move that uh, usually wins. So you have to, it's kind of cagey. It's a little bit like a uh, chess game where it's, it's very tactical, particularly with, I would say, probably 15 people who are strong contenders for the race. Uh, it's, going to be, it's going to come down to who plays their cards at the right moment. It, it'll, be, it'll be one within one or two seconds. Probably one. That's Terry has a great ability to read the uh, financial pages a day ahead of time. We should use him <laughs> to get the stocks or something. What he said yesterday is exactly true today. And here we have now about a mile to go. Look at everybody together. What they're doing right now is the same thing that goes on, Dan, in a marathon. They're monitoring each other's breathing. They're watching for each other's stride patterns, trying to see who's about to falter. They're also gauging how much they have left and when they should make their lift and their surge. And this pack is quite big. One guy in the race is a fellow named Doug Padilla, who has ranked as high as second in the world in 1985 at 5,000 meters and a two-time Olympian. He's got terrific speed at the finish. If the pace is a little slow and Doug is running well now, he could be one of the co-favors to get to that line first collecting $4,000. There are a lot of people, as you can see from the race, that have a chance to win here. Uh, Jim Spivey, another guy with Chicago Connections, uh, went to high school in, Ch in the Chicago area, uh, an Olympian has run the best mile time of the year, I believe, and under the 350 mark, and Spivey would be a content, uh, contender, too. I think especially, Larry, if the pace is a bit slow as it seems to be. Well, I talked to Jim ahead of time, and he actually said, Larry, I don't think I'm going to quite be up there, he said this year. He said, I was injured after the New York where he ran 352 when it was 100 degrees out, uh, so I'm, I would be surprised if he's there. But the top runners are there. I see John Gregoric there, a fellow named John Shearer, wearing number four. On the far right-hand side, looking back over his shoulder, a man with excellent speed, William Mushioki from Kenya, uh, who is living in the United States right now and, and is a very good kicker. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see him up there at the finish as well. You've seen Mushoki run before. Is, is that his normal style? Or he appears to be laboring just a little bit. Well, he does appear a little bit, yet I don't think this pace is, is that bad for him. Remember, he's tucked behind and letting everybody else push the wind aside. And the people in the second and third rows uh, are actually letting the others do the work, and that's a plus. At this point, they're running with the wind at their backs also. They're coming uh, south down Lakeshore Drive. Number 11, Frank O'Mara, a world-class performer right there that you just saw in your camera in the lead. Uh, came in late last night and won a race the other day, as a matter of fact, at 5,000 meters. You see the rest of the pack trying to catch up. The man on the right, the black man that you see with the black shorts right there, Wilson Wagwa, is 42 years of age <laughs> and has the world's fastest mile ever for a man over 40. He's run 4.05 for the mile. Sensational performance. Obviously having a good time out there, too. Terry Brom is out of it. I just saw him right there behind Wagwa, no less. There's a humbling experience for a world-class guy <laughs> being beaten by a 42-year-old. <laughs> Well, you see the time. Uh, There's Spivey. And the orange okay. pants up there, Jim is back as he said he would be. We have about a quarter of a mile to go, about 400 meters. This is going to be a great finish. John Gregoric, number six. O'Mara up there. This will be a great finish, everybody. What a close-knit group of athletes here. There you see the move being made by Aaron Ramirez. There is Liz McCaulgan right there in the left that went by in the orange. We're back to the men's race here now. Remember, they're trying to beat a time of 13 minutes and 26 seconds for 5,000 meters. That comes down to better than 4 minutes and 20 seconds per mile. For it doesn't look miles. like they're going to make that, Larry, but there's going to be a spectacular finish in the men's group here. O'Mara has great speed. He's a world-class miler as well. Look at him go. He's now got the lead right now. And here are some people trying to make a run at him. Number 14 on the left from Poland is Michael Bartoszak. In second place, O'Mara's looking left. Bartoszak's over his right shoulder. Mauricio Gonzalez is back there in the pack, too, trying to move up. Frank O'Mara will win it. It is O'Mara in first place and a surprise second place finish. Superb performance, and that was another outsider. Juan uh, Quintanilla from Mexico, who has been a real surprise on the circuit this year, takes third. A lot of the big names didn't make that top three. Let's see if we can uh, spot Liz McCulgan in there anywhere. 
Let's watch for McColgan. She has an excellent chance, I think, Dan, to come very close to that world best. Let's watch for her down that straightaway. Again, that world best time is 15.05, and that was set right here last year by Francie LaRue Smith. There's Terry Brown on the left of your picture just finishing up there. As we push back, Jim Spivey right there, lower left-hand corner. And here comes McColgan. She just passed the three-mile sign. Her time, 14 minutes and 27 seconds through two miles. She has an excellent chance for this record. There she is powering along, number 52 that you see. She won the world championships of track and field. That's at least as big in the sport as the Olympic Games. And she crushed the field. And Dan, 11 months ago, she had a baby. And she's been back after training just 11 months. Look at the sensational time. She's going to make it. You see the clock. Liz McCulgan has done it. In an unofficial time of 14.56. The fastest time ever run by a woman over 5,000 meters on the roads. Sensational time for McColgan. She is very ready here to run New York. I don't know if she'll get the world best ever, but she's been a tremendous talent since the age of 14 in Scotland, where she's from. What a tremendous performance by her. Imagine running four minutes and 50 seconds per mile, better than that, for three miles, a woman, and then running another, qu another quarter of a mile almost. That's what she accomplished. She ran another 188 yards. A Great spectacular effort by Liz McCulgan. We'll hear from her and from the men's winner when we come back in a moment. <laughs> Get ready for the great entertainer of the 90s, Star Search 92. Once again, thousands of other... You just saw the men's marathon leader pass by your screen. He is number 12. Jose Silva.